We want a house that could be functional for us long term. Wow, look at that swing. A lot of people have asked about the RV. And then that field over there could be for animals. Oh, and the other thing is our current house. Are we selling it or what? Hi guys, welcome back to our vlog. We are hanging out at the property today doing some school out here. Actually, we haven't started because it's beautiful and we wanted to take advantage of the nice weather. It's gonna be hot this afternoon. Hi, what are you guys making? Bird tables? I got that from the jelly. Wow. Me and Daddy share one. Oh, you got some grape jelly? <laughs> are you fussy? <laughs> She's a bit fussy today. Oh, are you sad? Oh. <laughs> today I want to show you guys what the kids have been up to out here at our property. They're so creative and I want to tell you about some of the plans we have for this place. We are living in two different places right now and we don't want to be doing that forever. So I'm going to kind of show you what we've been thinking now that we've had some time out here. But I'm going to go take care of this fussy baby first and get back to you. Alright, I got her down. She slept through the night, which is unusual for her last night, but she woke up really fussy. It was so strange. She slept like 11 hours and she's, she has slept through the night sometimes, but she'll go to a point where she's sleeping about a third of the time through the night and like every third night and then she'll get sick and forget it. She'll start waking up twice a night. Ooh, she's something else. So <laughs> She is the perfect baby in every way. She's so sweet. All my babies that have, I have had a couple of them that didn't sleep well through the night. I had a lot of them who slept really well, really early. So the few that have not, they always are sleeping right around a year old and she's almost a year. So I'm just hanging on, no big deal. But I do appreciate those nights when she sleeps. Have you guys seen that we got a table? My Aunt Sharon found this table in her basement. I mean, she didn't find it. She knew she had it for a long time. 52 years ago, she found it at an antique shop 52 years ago in Michigan. She has kept it in her basement. We know it's over 100 years old based on some of the, uh, how it's carved and stuff. I think the chairs are the same age, but we can see an inscription. There's a little flap door that comes down where you can see the inscription of the guy who carved it. It is so cool. Anyway, she said it was just sitting in her basement and it's so wide and big. Let's see, we have two chairs on each end that she's like, you guys just need to use it. So she gave it to us. Our area here, even though this house is small, it's really wide at the dining area. And this table, as you can see, there's still room for it to grow. It has three small leaves in it now. It has one more leaf than this. It has four leaves. But there's actually room for two more beside that. So a friend of ours from church, he took it home, the leaf, and he's making two more. We also found a leg. Aunt Sharon found a leg at an antique store because we need, it sags a little in the middle. It's an old table. And so we'll have one, two, three, six legs, or six leaves. So from here to here, it will be that much larger because those are three right now. And yeah, it's gonna be so great. We do sit around it though. We sat around it um, last night. I have a little clip of that while we were eating dinner. I think that was at lunch actually after church. We love that table, such a blessing. I really wanted to not furnish this stuff spending a lot of money at all. So between a few things at the salvage warehouse, several things we were given and whatever we could find at our house, we basically made it so it's very livable and that has been huge. So I wanted to tell you since the kids are, they're down fishing right now, a young man from our church who does woodworking, a different young man than I was talking about, he is gonna help us build a chicken house. I think you call them coops. <laughs> We've been designing it for a few days, um, especially him, but I kind of tell him what I want, like aesthetically, and then he's, we've been doing research and stuff. I want it to house 35 birds, but I think we're actually making it to house 40, so we're not gonna have that many in the beginning. I just wanna make sure it's plenty big. And then we're gonna do a little duck house on one side of it, and a guinea house on the other side. That's there. They'll be just a little smaller than the middle one. So exciting. So he's building that for us. And the biggest thing that I'm happy about is that he's actually going to teach some of our kids to build it when he's building it or how, he's going to bring them alongside and teach them how that's huge to me. That's bigger than all other things. We could just hire somebody to build it, but he's going to teach them. The boys I think are the ones that are wanting to learn. I, I don't know. We'll see if Belle wants to learn, but 
um, and Tori, but to have the skills, then they can do whatever they want. We're excited for ducks because um, some of us have egg allergies to chicken eggs, but not to duck eggs. And so that'll be fun. Plus we have the water. We thought it would just be so fun to have ducks. Ducks are so cute. Anyway, I don't know if I want to eat ducks. <laughs> the chickens, uh, we would love to do them more sustainably, like get crossover birds. So we're using them for meat birds and eggs, but we'll see. I'm reading as much as I can about people who do that, but it doesn't seem like a ton of people do that. They either do, they do their meat birds separately. So we're gonna learn as we go. You guys are always a wealth of information, but I'm trying to find the book that teaches me about doing both at once and uh, not having separate birds for separate things, but we'll see. And then the guinea fowl will really help with ticks. We have a lot of trees on this property. We're an area that has a lot of ticks. Does every area have ticks? I don't know. But we need something to help with that. I think the chickens and ducks help with ticks too, but the guinea fowl really go after ticks. So I don't think I'm gonna build a run for them yet. I don't think we will, because we want them to free range a lot. So we're gonna train them to come back to us. My sister-in-law Jill had a lot of ideas for that. She's got birds. She's got turkeys and ducks and chickens and talked about how easy it is to just let them go out and then call them back Shaking the bag of mealworms or whatever. <laughs> okay, like, let me take you upstairs so I can show you what we're thinking about the property since right now the kids are out fishing with the young man who's doing the chicken coop. <laughs> He's not starting quite yet. And so they went out to the water to fish with him so it's quiet here and the baby's sleeping, like I said. Oh, I got a few things on the wall finally. Doesn't it look so much nicer? It's kind of cozy. We do have a TV here, but we shove it mostly it's right it's out right now because we used it last night but we've used it very little and then i put it back behind that couch when we're done when it's out of sight it is out of mind most of the time but i want to show you up here i wanted to film this video with solo but we've when we're together we got so much to do oh it's been hard to sit down and talk to the camera so tomorrow we meet with a builder we are currently living between two houses so we spend a couple nights several days out here every week and Judah's going to be here more of that time than us even so there's always someone here usually but we live more of our lives at our other house that's where our stuff is and stuff it is hard going back and forth and our goal was never to just have a second home that was not our goal and we don't want to just have a second home that's not not what we were going for. So we thought when we were looking for land that we would either find a big house that we'd have to renovate on land or we would find, more likely, we would find land that we need to build on. So that's just what we assumed the whole time. We did not expect to find the perfect property with a small home on it, which gives us the option of staying out here a couple of times a week, being out here more. Um, but it's also not something we want to live in long term. So our plan has been to build a house out here and we'd like to build and leave this house separate. So we did think originally maybe we could add on to this house. In fact, the previous owners had had plans drawn up, but there were two of them and they were retirement age and so their plans aren't quite maybe what we would use. There are 13 of us <laughs> now. Judah's older, he's 18, he won't be around long, but we want a house that could be functional for us long term, and we wanna think about when our kids come home, bring their families, whatever. We just want something that is not overwhelming when there's just two of us left, but is also very usable for us now. So it's a lot to think through. We have a lot of very specific ideas that would help go toward that goal. Um, but what to do in the meantime? Going back and forth, his, in the first few weeks it was really challenging because we didn't have anything out here, so we're always bringing lots and lots of stuff. Now we have more out here, but we're bringing clothes, we're bringing food, and we're bringing school. And so I would like to get to the point that we're only bringing food and school, and we, are, we have like uh, several outfits out here for those days, and then we just do laundry before we leave so that we bring an outfit, that we're wearing and we stay and then we leave in an outfit so it is rotating a little but i don't know that's what i'm thinking i need to organize that and work through that because i need to bring less stuff and have less lists it's 
it is uh, a lot. We're not that far from our house. We can drive home and we do. We go home to the other house. And we go back and forth between both houses, but it's far enough that you want to just get your stuff out there so you can relax and stay. Anyway, we would like to build out here and we're really trying to figure out where we would want the big house, the main house. And then we can keep this house as a guest house for a family, for um, some of our kids, if they ever wanted to live in this house, just to have options. It would be so nice if we're able to make that work. So we're not 100% sure we're gonna be able to swing that, but that would be the ultimate goal, is to just keep this house as extra on the property. So let me show you what our options that we know of right now. We'll see after we meet with the builder, but what our options we think are. So over there we have a lot of acres, a big field. It's, it was alfalfa and the farmer that they rented the field out to just plowed that down. So now we can go out in that field. And there is like a slope where you can go near the top of it. Going out there might be a little more visible to a road, um, but it is a nice area now down there is the water, and if you see right there, I can see some of those kids down there fishing on the dock. There's not really a good spot to build to have a water view, and I don't know that I would want one. We'd have to take a lot of trees down to do that. But out here is a field of wildflowers, which I love. I love the wild stuff. I would actually like more of this to be the wild stuff. That'd be my preference. <laughs> I know that brings the animals closer to the house and things like that, There's there are definitely issues to worry about when you got the wild stuff closer to your house, but I love the natural wildflowers, the, the native stuff. Anyway, if we built down there in that area, we would just have to remove, I think, a few trees, and we definitely have plenty of trees on this property. There are new ones growing all the time. It would be closer to the water, and we can maybe even remove a few more trees for a better view of the water from that house and it would be a little closer to this smaller home and it'd be like the homes are more together so would that could be good or bad I'm trying to figure out maybe the chickens could be over here in this field between the two homes and then that field over there could be for animals i really would like to do have a just a few cows i know that sounds crazy <laughs> Sounds crazy to me, but uh, the more we talk about it and read about it, the more we're convinced that we'd like to maybe have a couple dairy cows and some raise our own beef, just small herd, and have a barn over there. Maybe a, couple, a donkey or two and a few cows. That way the animals are kind of separate. So we'll see, we're gonna get a builder out here. We're meeting with him tomorrow in his office and then we'll get him out here hopefully soon and talk to him about what he thinks. He works, he does acreages a lot and just see what he thinks about where the location should be of the house. Um, this one back here would be much more private. No one ever would see it, which is awesome. I do like that, but the other one might have a better view. Uh, snow would probably blow more off the field and collect more down here by the trees. It also would be windy. This is this is the plains. So it's very it can be very windy and so it might be too windy out there. The wind is what blows the snow away. So there's pl pluses and minuses I think. We'll see if the builder comes out and is like definitely not there, definitely there or opposite whatever. Um but yeah, that's what we're thinking right now. We would like to get it going. Whoa, you see? <laughs> He landed right on the lens, that was cool. Uh, we'd like to get it going pretty quick and I think we'll move out here before it's done. That's what we're thinking right now. Um, we thought we could we could do this house for about a year. We got two kids that for, were really dead set against it. Actually, the Lord knows what you need, right? I'm, sorry, I'm turning so that maybe the wind is not <laughs> making it loud for you guys. Hopefully I'm the right way. Maybe I should just go in. <laughs> The Lord knows what you need more than you do. This is what we found time and time again in our lives. Um, I told you we thought we would just buy a property and build there, but our kids have needed this transition. It's been so good for them. If you've been around for a while, you know we have the most amazing neighborhood. We love it. We love our neighbors. They're great friends, a number of them. And the kids just have playmates never ending which is awesome. When we're out here, they play with each other a lot more than when we're at home. They actually don't play with each other as much at home. 
so there's negative and positive for both things. Um, but we really feel like we've built up a community. We don't feel like we'll lose community now. We've put a lot of things in place in our lives that give our kids, our homeschooled kids, a lot of social interaction and community. And so Solo and I really have just felt like it's time to move out. Now, some of our kids are like, how could we leave our neighbors and our friends? And the more we've come out here, they are in love with it. The more they can see themselves out here and we've, we're we inviting friends. Friends are out here all the time with us. Our friends all love this property and they wanna be out here. And so buying a, a place that had a small place on it was exactly what we needed because we needed to be able to spend that time out here and let our kids get used to it. We're not wanting to do something that they really are against, even if only one of them is really against it. And so this time has been a good transition. Uh, there's still a couple of my older kids that are really nervous about being out here, but more we see each week more and more that they're adjusting and they can see themselves out here. I think their biggest concerns now is just living in the small house and we have a couple ideas for that too because if we ended up with for about one year in this smaller house, um, we were thinking to try to first get up a big like a metal building, a storage building. What do they call those? A huge shed that is actually has a concrete floor and is heated and cooled. Maybe make it like um, a hangout area because our winters are long and cold here. It's We go outside every day, but it's hard to be out for a long time and that's when this house would feel really tight. And so I think that kind of place could serve us in the future too. We'd probably put a big TV out there and a, a hangout area, a gym, um, the, our, our exercise equipment. The boys want to get some different weights and we'd have like an area that's a play area for little kids. Maybe they could ride their bikes in there. Just get that kind of big storage facility out there, maybe before our house is built and use that to supplement here. Not that people would sleep in there necessarily, but that they could go there to hang out or escape or play or the little ones could go there so this house is quieter for a minute and just you know when you have all ages you want to make sure that everyone is comfortable that's now only the biggest concern with just a couple of them too and we're talking about where could you sleep here that you could feel comfortable long term and escape you know they're seeing themselves here more and more all the time and so having the this small place to come has been an answer to prayer that we didn't even pray, you know? We didn't even realize what we needed. <laughs> so that's been awesome. That's what we're thinking, a big shed on one side of the property that would be more hidden. That could be a play, hangout place. Um, we could store our RV in there, like that kind of size, but also pull it out and use it for other things if we keep the RV. A lot of people have asked about the RV and I'll tell you, we're going to Florida soon and we're taking the RV. It'll be the first time we've done a long trip. We are going to use Florida as the litmus test to see if we're keeping it. So it's a lot of work for anybody. RVs are a lot of work. They're a lot of work and a lot of expense. If it's so much fun that it's a great hobby and you love it, it's worth the work and expense. I think for solo, it's for me, it has been for solo. It's maybe a little more borderline. <laughs> it's been more work for him. Uh, there's a lot of things that I can't do that he has to do. I maintain what I can on the inside, but really it falls on him and it's a lot so we're gonna see if it makes the trip just amazing and we want to keep it or if it's just not worth it and make the decision after that long trip that's what we decided even in the spring that after our Florida trip we'll make a decision about the RV so uh, if we really love it we may start renting it out some that would be fun we thought about doing that if we keep it here it's great it would actually be it's hard to use in the winter, but it could be another spot that uh, some kids could escape to, especially if it was in a temperature controlled environment for the winter. Our winters are long and hard and, you know, pipes freeze and stuff, so it wouldn't be fully functional in the winter here unless we had it in a temperature controlled environment. And lots of variables there. Oh, and the other thing is our current house. Are we selling it or what? So we have talked a lot about renting it out airbnb in it it's got a pool it'd be fun for like wedding parties and family reunions and that kind of thing we could make a lot of money doing that so we definitely have thought about that um we don't want to live in two houses long term but we could use it i think one of 
One of our biggest regrets is our very first house, which was like 700 square feet. It was the cutest thing, is selling that. We, when we moved to the next house up, it was double the size, and we really needed to, um, we needed to sell it in order to afford the next one. My battery died there, and then I wanted to let the dog in, but I was gonna say, if we could have uh, kept it and rented it out, it would have been such a great investment. And then we thought the same thing the second time we sold our second house, we're in our third house now. So this time, we really wanna think through, is, is this uh, uh, something that could be a good investment for us and help make us money? You know, you don't want to just be sitting on properties, you want them to make you money, so. <laughs> We've been trying to really think through that. I think we're leaning towards selling it right now because um, we have another idea in mind for making money with real estate. But uh, yeah, I think that's where we're leaning right now. I'm gonna show you around this property because I have not been guiding the kids play at all. I'm like, go play. This morning, I will admit, it was hard to get them outside. That never is hard at, um, at our other house because the neighbor kids are out, so they wanna go out and talk to their friends. Um, but here, sometimes they're like, uh, kind of acting bored, but I made them go outside. I don't care if they're bored, and they found stuff to do. They have found some really unique projects around here. It's so fun seeing them come to life, and it's amazing to me that kids love to work the land. They, they like naturally want to work the land. I don't know if this is all kids. I don't think my kids are like necessarily more nature-minded than other kids. I never would have even thought of them really as being very nature-minded, I guess. I could say, but they just come to life. The other day we were down by the water um, with a friend and he's like, let's make a fire down here. And he gave the kids a shovel and a saw and they were like, it was like the most exciting day of their life. <laughs> it was like they were in Disneyland, for real. Digging out a hole and finding leaves and dead trees and stuff to throw in it to make the fire and cutting, using the saw to cut stuff. They love working the land. And so they found some really, Fun, three big projects I'm gonna show you out here that they have been working, and I just think it's so fun. I did not guide any of it. I did not come up with any of it. It's all of their own doing, just what they naturally have wanted to do. And it's really cool. There's Nathan, he's the one building the chicken coop. He's out here fishing. And then, okay, Eli, yes. I'm out here to show your projects. I wanna see what you cut down yesterday. Okay. Eli got an axe and Solo told him a few dead trees he can cut down can. and we were across the forest in the field Solo and I and Destiny oh, and yeah. Peace and we heard screams of excitement we could tell it was excitement thank goodness <laughs> and we they came they came running to tell us oh he got something of course no, no. Uh-oh. Yeah, that happened to me three times. But what? I, yeah. what? I got and then it just let go. But then it let go. <laughs> That's a real fisherman right there. <laughs> after, after, I cut, after I cut it down, I just said Oh, there it is. So, okay, anyway, they came to tell us that Eli cut down his first tree. He was so excited. We have a number of dead trees that need to go. Wow, so where was this? Was this the stump that you cut it off of, Eli? Um, yes. You should have seen Hope tell the story. She was out here with him, yeah. solo first. He gave him a lesson, how to do it safely, whatever, blah, 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 all the things. So the, the, <laughs> there were little ones watching. You should have seen Hope tell yeah. the story. I wish I would have had a camera. Yeah. Eli yeah. cut down his first tree yeah. and we watched it. And she went on and on and on. Oh my goodness, the excitement. They, all the things they've ever learned about Paul Bunyan and <laughs> they're all coming to life for us here. Holes that we dug. Oh, I'm gonna show them that too. Right here, yeah. It's a lot of work, huh? Yeah, wow, look at that swing. He woke up this morning to come chop more trees. It's his new passion. <laughs> she wants to go home. Have you had enough outdoors? <laughs> You'd probably be able to kick that over now. We could probably, oh, nice. <laughs> Very good.
giving birth right now to temporary name. We started to make houses over here. Mm -hmm. Then Micah gave us a better idea. And now if we go down over there, we're built, we're digging into the ground. Oh. And we're going to put sticks on top as a roof. Okay. Gonna dig and then make stairs. All right, it's called Buildingsburg, their town. Let me show you the... Is it the town hall in here? In the fort it's area? the town hall right now, yeah. No, that's the one. Can you guys tell them what book inspired all this? Um, Mom got a book called Rocks and Boxen. It is based on a true story, yes. Okay, we gotta go in here. So right now, this is the town hall. Yeah, they used some big shears and some saws and cut a lot of this stuff in here. So there's some trails in here that lead to the rest of the town, right? Is the town going to expand farther? Is that the future plans? Yes. Gotcha. This area, you can actually go in from over there. But I was thinking about cutting some branches and making that the new town hall. Oh. I mentioned earlier that we were going to dig houses instead. This is where we were going. That first one's the wells. She's been making it by herself. The second one, the deepest one, is Mike and Eli's. They've been building that together. This one is and the one on the end is mine. Whoa! This one is that's my deep. Shovel. That's yours? That's it's mine. my shovel. Wow, that's this a one big one. one. Destiny, try getting in there. Why is every kid's <laughs> dream to b dig? No, I'm gonna <laughs> At least my kids. Mom, can I show you mine? Wow. So we told them if the, if they're in the forest the and not on a trail, myself. they can dig. This is the one I've been building myself. Wow. And then Hope's is what? Hope just started one. Another day I will show you. We have a separate shed. It's like a garage. And the previous owner left us so much. So many shovels and saws and all kinds of tools. And they're all so well organized. And it's, it's like a dream for all of us basically. <laughs> Anyway, they always want to dig it home, and we've let them dig a little, but not too much, because we don't want these massive holes in our yard. So, to get to just dig to their heart's content. To hear, oh, let me help you. Come on, climb out. It's been very fun. Wow. Several of my big kids are at school today. Uh, they go off to school once a, one day a week, and uh, so you haven't seen them. But we're gonna head back to the house. Judah's there, a piece of sleeping, and I'm gonna get Desi some water. When we have an update on, after we meet with the builder and all that, we will come back and update you guys and let you know how it's going and how our plans have changed, because they always change. Thanks for watching, bye. Bye. Have a great day.